So this should cover your very first lesson in Leaving Cert Biology. And we ask ourselves, what is biology? Biology is the study of life. That's the definition. But really, we should put in the scientific study of life. So think of biology as this umbrella term. It's a very broad science. And in biology, there are many different fields. And you're required to give examples of areas of study encompassed by the term biology. So here's a few examples, but there will be others in your book. So botany is the study of plants. Zoology, the study of animals. Genetics, the study of genes and heredity. Bacteriology, the study of bacteria. Mycology, the study of fungi. And ecology, the study of the interactions between organisms and their environment. So now you know that biology is the study of life or the scientific study of life. But what is life? This is where we have to look at the details. What does life mean? All living things share a common functional need for two things, metabolism and continuity. So if it's a living thing, it will show metabolism and continuity. And note that is a very important point for your exams. So a definition of life could be something that is organic based and shows metabolism and continuity. Be able to define metabolism. It's all of the chemical reactions that occur within an organism, or you could say the sum of the chemical reactions that occur within an organism. What is meant by continuity? Define continuity. Living things arise from other living things of the same type. Cell continuity would specifically mean that all cells arise from other existing similar cells. Living things or organisms share a common functional need for metabolism and continuity and how they achieve metabolism and continuity leads us to some common characteristics that are noticeable and these are the characteristics of life. So there are five characteristics for our course that we have to know. Organisation, nutrition, excretion, response and reproduction. And we say the rhyme, Oscar never eats red radishes to help us remember them. Organisation, the most basic unit of life is the cell. Cells are the building blocks of life and cells have all of the characteristics of life. When we think of nutrition, we're considering the way in which an organism obtains and uses food from its environment. There can be heterotrophs, organisms that cannot make their own food and autotrophs, organisms that can make their own food. Excretion is the removal of metabolic waste from the organism. Response is the ability to detect and respond to stimuli, so both internal and external stimuli, for example, temperature, pressure, pain. Reproduction is to create new individuals of the same kind. This can happen sexually or asexually. Is it alive? Is it a living thing? How do you distinguish between living and non-living entities? Well, you would have to go back to the five characteristics of life. To be alive, all of those characteristics must be exhibited, so all five. So you would have to go through each one of the five to see if they are exhibited. Let's pause and recap. Metabolism and continuity are two functional requirements for life. So showing metabolism and continuity is a definition of life. When we look at how organisms meet these two requirements, well, then this leads us to some common characteristics. These are the characteristics of life. Organisation is the first characteristic of life, with the cell being the most basic unit of organisation. It's the most basic building block of life, able to carry out all of those characteristics. This leads us to nutrition, the way in which an organism obtains and uses its food. So there are autotrophs, organisms that can make their own food, and heterotrophs, organisms that cannot make their own food, and they must eat other animals or plants. Excretion is the removal of metabolic waste from the organism. Very important that you state metabolic waste. Then there's response, the ability to detect and respond to stimuli, both internal and external stimuli. For example, temperature is a common one. And the fifth one is reproduction, to create new individuals of the same kind. And there is sexual and asexual reproduction. For something to be considered living or alive, all five of those characteristics must be evident. So let's apply our learning. Here is a diagram of a virus. A virus is considered by scientists to be non-living and it's considered to be non-living because it does not exhibit all five characteristics of life. For example, it does not exhibit organisation. It's not made of cells. It's non-cellular. And then reproduction. Well, it's an obligate parasite. It cannot reproduce independently. It's important that you can define the characteristics of life. The definition is as follows. The common characteristic ways of fulfilling the organism's functional need for metabolism and continuity identified by the fundamental principles and interactions of organisation, nutrition, excretion, response and reproduction. 
This is one definition that I would pay attention to and spend time learning. It's due in appearance and be aware of how each one of those characteristics links in with metabolism and continuity. An alternative definition for life could be that life is the possession of all five characteristics of life, which fulfills an organism's functional need for metabolism and continuity. A short topic with some important definitions. So pause the video now, write your own notes, use your textbook to read up further on each of those characteristics. How do they link in with metabolism and or or continuity? Learn the definitions, really important. Check the past exam questions and ask yourself, what has never appeared? That's what I want to know. What's never appeared? And consider that. So the very best of luck with all of that revision and learning.